What a joy for D and I to be back with you. Thank you so much for your response. Yes. People were meeting on the streets. We just enjoy so much people we're hearing from. Thank you for your emails. Thank you for your reports of victory in your yes. life. Yes. The very reason that we're here is just for you. We come just to bless you, bless your family. So thankful for this ministry, yeah. allowing an open door for us to come and caring about the things that are important to you. And we just got a great program today. The word of the Lord came to me in prayer this morning. I just was interceding over you and your family. And God said this to me, he said, tell them that I am turning their stumbling blocks into stepping stones into the greatest days of their life. And that's a word for somebody because I, I was just praying for you and it just kept burning in my heart, burning my heart. So I just stopped and typed it out and said, okay, Lord, somebody needs to know Amen. everything that's come against you, yeah. everything that's tried to stop you, every stumbling block the enemy could throw in your pathway. God said to you, Amen. he's working a plan. He's orchestrating your steps, and you're about to step into the greatest days of your life. Which brings us to the subject Dee and I have felt that God wants us to talk about today, and that's transitioning to the greater, moving from where you are to a greater level in God, stepping into this year of dominion and authority and power, kingdom living, where you see God doing great and mighty things. I've just come back from the state of Arkansas and the Spirit of God, literally the service just became flooded with the glory of God as we were just ministering and reaching our faith out, ministering to the people. And I just want to tell you, this is a new season. And I know you've heard the scripture before, but I just want to mention it again. Isaiah 43, 19, God said to you, yeah. Behold, I will do a new thing. There's something new that's about to happen in your life. And he said, I'm going to take that dry place, that yeah. desert place, that place that's been very uncomfortable, that you've had to just walk by faith and not by sight, well, God said to you, he's about to turn that into a well-watered, beautiful place of productivity. Right. Babe, I was looking up that scripture um, in the Message Bible, and it says, forget about what's happened. Mm. Don't keep going over old history. That's so good. But be alert and be present, because I'm about to do a something, and it's brand new. It's bursting out. Mm. Don't you see it? Wow. There it is. I'm making a road through the desert and rivers in the badlands. What a truth. Absolutely. Because so many times I think we use our, <clears throat> we allow our history to be the compass for what God's called us to. Yeah. You know, and, and that's just something that we need to learn from our history. Yep. But we don't need to be tied down and tied up to our history. So true. So true. The thing I think that the enemy uses against us is things that God's already washed away. Absolutely. The blood has already removed Absolutely. it. And he and doesn't even remember it. Does not even remember it. It's gone. The, so God has set you up to transition you right. into a position of the blessing of God. And I just want to say to you, there is a God reason that you're listening yeah. to mine and Dee's voice right now. There's a God reason that you flipped across the screen and bam, you reached into our hearts. God has you positioned Thank to you. move into something that you've never, ever tasted. I can just tell you, you might as well get comfortable being uncomfortable because God's fixing to stretch you to a whole new level in the kingdom of God. You're about to go where you've never gone to be blessed with things you've never, ever experienced yeah. because these are the last days. These are moments where God said he's going to accelerate the plans of God. And there's 
things that I've learned by stepping into transition. And I just want to, dig and I just maybe two or three of them would like to give you. The first one, maybe they'll get it on the screen, said, Master your inner world, and peace prevails, and succeed in your outer world. Now, it's real important that you just, let's just kind of digest that. First of all, master your inner world. Too many times, what we look at in our emotions and our circumstances, we got to realize your inner world is greater than your circumstances. The faith of God inside of you is much greater than the thing that you're going through, no matter how big it is, no matter how hard it is. So we have to master this inner world. That's the reason some people think when they get born again, it's all done. But Jesus said, your spirit's born again. But then Paul said, you have to renew your mind. You have to set things in order on the inside because the inside is deciding your outside. The Bible said, as a man thinks, Proverbs 23, 18, so, or 23, 7, that as you're thinking is what you're becoming. Whatever you're thinking is what you're becoming. So I want you to think bigger. I want you to put your faith in that place. Understand God has success for you. Right. We have to live from the inside out. Yes. Not allow the outside to affect the inside. We have to live from the inside out. And I think, babe, once we get to that point where, and it's not something that happens overnight. Right. Honestly, it's a daily renewing of the mind that I'm going to live life from the inside out. And once we can master that, um, then situations that have been plaguing mm. us for years, they're going, they're going to lose their hold on us. Right. You know, right. Um, when we're living from the outside in, when we allow the outside pressures to rule us, we're all over the road. Yep. I mean, we're, we're derailed in, in what we're supposed to be doing. But if when we master that, not if we master that, but when, when we can master that, you know, then we can um, we can just flow through life with the things that God's called us to. It does, and I'm not saying that life doesn't happen, you know, but it just it's our perception and how we handle things um, from the outside. If we can master the inside, the when thing, we master the, the, the inside. thing the Lord kept saying to me is peace. Mm-hmm. flows from the inside out. Right. Peace is not everything being right out here. That's right. Peace flows. Yeah. Get this in your heart. Peace flows from living inside out, where you allow, feed your faith the Word of God. Faith mm-hmm. cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Feed your faith the Word of God. Constantly feed your faith. Meditate on the laws of God. Then he said, Peace will prevail over your life. Mm -hmm. And as peace prevails, then success and the blessing and health. So much of of people's physical conditions that are not doing well actually come from an unrest, not having peace, Mm -hmm. pressures, Mm -hmm. stress, call it what you want to. But the Lord said to tell you today, He's transitioning you to a greater. Right. And you got to start by living inside out. This was hard for me and her. We had to make up our mind. Nobody was going to decide what happens to us. We're going to believe God's Word. We're going to take the Word into our hearts. We're going to live by the Word. And that takes a training, Mm -hmm. if I could use that word, of how we talk, how we think, how we talk, how we act, because we have to create new habits that say, I'm going to believe God's Word. I'm going to stand on the Word of God. You may have got a bad report from a doctor. The doctors are good people, but they don't have the final authority. God is still in the healing business. I wouldn't be here today if it hadn't been for his healing power. That's right, right. And, you know, this is where I think the Holy Spirit is so vital in our lives because he's the umpire. I've heard you say preach that so many times, that the Holy Spirit 
is the umpire of our lives. And so the Holy Spirit leads us to a place of peace where we become comfortable in our yeah. own skin. We become comfortable in what God's called us to, to where we don't have to go running around searching out the opinions and the applause of man. Right. But we become comfortable, if I can say it that way, in our own skin and what God's called us to do as the Holy Spirit leads us to that place of peace. You know, I have to constantly guard against logic. Mm -hmm. Sometimes circumstances, situations, we look at it very logical. Right. And God said to me just recently, I was telling him about a problem like he didn't know about it. And, uh, and it was like he said back to me, don't allow logic to decide your day to day. Mm -hmm. Faith should decide your praise, your worship, your attitude in life. So be careful not to allow logic to gain control. Second step that we get on the screen is monitor your emotions. Set your focus every morning on your emotions. Mm -hmm. If they're out of control, if fear and doubt and unbelief and anxieties and pressures are dominate, stop, spend a moment in God's right. presence, monitor your emotions, think about. And I can tell you, all great men and women of God, honey, that I've known through these years have all gone through disappointments. Absolutely. They've gone through sickness. They've gone through all kinds of pressures, financial, emotional, but then they just had to make a choice that I am going to live by the Word. Yeah. I'm not going to live by my emotions. I'm not going to live by my feelings. And I think that's why he said, as many as are led by the Spirit, mm -hmm. they're the sons of God. And so I think it's just important as people of God, and I hate to say this, but i got to say it, be alert to toxic people who try to keep you upset. The enemy will try to send into your life toxic people who are talking fear, negativity, small thinking, and you've got this word from the Lord. You're excited about this word from the Lord. You're fired up about what God said to you. You've prayed. You've fasted. And then here comes these toxic people starting pouring cold water on the fire of God. And I just want to tell you sometime, and she says it better than I do, you just got to disconnect. Yeah. Cut them sap suckers loose. <laughs> you really sometimes, you, you say do. snip, snip. That's it. And I think sometimes we have to, as bad as we hate to, say to people, I am not going to allow you and your attitude right. to change my world. That's right. I'm going to keep believing God. Right. I can tell you these are the greatest days I've ever lived, and I've been in the kingdom work for almost five decades, and this very moment is the greatest time of my life. It seems like God has so prepared people to receive the supernatural of God, to be healed, to be delivered, to be blessed, to enjoy supernatural things. We were created in the image of God. Right after the likeness of God, to have the blessings of God. And so don't ever settle down for just barely surviving. Yeah. Refuse to accept past limitations. Break out of past limitations. Break into the blessing of God. Don't listen to people saying, well, this or well, that. Be persistent with your faith. Be persistent with what God has told you. Because I believe the words of your mouth right. create the world that we live right. in. And you know, babe, if, if we don't master our emotions and get them under control and monitor them, they will control and monitor us. Oh, yes, they will. And I really believe that it will rob us of our future and what God has for us. And really, he says for us to do that. So That's we right. have to take some responsibility Absolutely. and Absolutely. say, you know what? I'm not going to allow the negativity of the world around me right. to change my vision. The third thing I've learned in transitioning to the greater is you have to magnify 
the promises of God. Yes. You have to magnify what God has told you. Yep. Talking to somebody right now, yep. God told you something. Yep. wasn't from man. It was from God. It looks impossible, but he is still the God of the impossible. God's still doing things that others say cannot be done. Yes. Yeah, I just got back from Arkansas, and pastor there uh, wanted to build a ranch for retired people, and he didn't have the money. First of all, a ranch means more than an acre or two, and God worked out a situation, I won't go into all the details, where he had a two-and-a-half-acre lot right against the interstate that the gentleman who owned the 400-acre ranch was willing to give him the 400 acres for the two and a half acres. So now they're sitting out on this 400 acre. See, you have to, God had given him a word about 10 or 12 years ago. You may, I think it was 10 years ago or so when we was there preaching for him and said, I'm going to give you a place where retired ministers who are burned out, hurting, can come and be restored. And he just kept that promise before him. Right. And he went through some things, but he just kept saying, God, yeah. I magnify your word. Yeah. I magnify the promise of God. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that we've got to come to that place where we understand that we can't afford to have victim talk. No. And no matter what the problem is, God's promise is bigger. Wow. Whatever it is. And God's promise will always take precedence over any problem that's coming against you. Somebody you're watching right now and you're thinking, God, there is no way I can go another day with what I am dealing with. But we just want to encourage you right now to understand that that promise that God spoke to you and some of you, it has been years ago and you've been standing on it and you've been battling and believing God for it. But we just want to tell you right now that whatever God promised you, thank you, Father. It will take precedence you, over Father. that problem that is wearing you out. Yes. So I just want to encourage you: lay that problem down, lay it at the feet of Jesus, and say, God, I choose to believe. Yes. That the promise you spoke to me, I will see it in Jesus' name. And I just want to say Jesus. something to you, just to tag on to what you said. The word of faith that you've spoken has already set in motion Thank your you, miracle. Jesus. Thank you, Even Jesus. though you haven't seen the manifestation, magnify the promise of God. Yeah. Give you another thing. The fourth thing is manage your fears. Yeah. That's a big word. Yeah. Manage your fears. Let the word of God dominate your life. We, you know, D, you and I have to do things sometime that fear is still present, right. but we just go right through Absolutely. that fear Absolutely. with the word of God being spoken out of our mouth because fear seeks to rob you of everything God said belonged to you. God's going to give you your household. So speak it. I don't care what the kids are doing, the grandkids are doing. God's going to give you your household. Yeah. He promised that yeah. to you. Believe You'll be saved and your house. God's going to give you your house. And so God's saying to you today, in these last few moments we have with you, God is about to do something that's going to rock your world. But you got to manage your fears. Do not let the spirit of fear dominate your life. Don't allow the enemy and great leaders. I study great leaders. Great leaders went ahead and did what God called them to do, even in the face of fear. Mm -hmm. And I think that you and I have lived long enough, seen God do the impossible, things that the world says can happen. D and I have seen God do it. So you have to understand, you got to say, devil, you're a liar. Fear, you'll not stop me. I am going to finish everything the Holy Spirit told me to do. And it's just important. Yeah. You know, honey, uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7 in the Passion Translation, I'd just like to read that. It says, For God will never mm. give you the spirit of fear, 
but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. Wow. Holy Spirit, if, it, it, if we have fear, it's never from God. No, it's not. It's never no, from it's God. Not. And you know something that I found that helps me when I feel like I'm becoming consumed with fear is just try to switch over um, and start thanking God for what I'm grateful for that yes. He's done for me. Yes. You know, to, just to switch your focus, to get your mind and your emotions off of that fear, but just to begin to meditate mm. on and verbalize. Let yourself hear you verbalizing what you're thankful for and what you're grateful for. Man. The last thing is master your life purpose. Yeah. Now, I want you to get ready to read Romans chapter 8 to you. The Lord is saying to you right now, God is calling you to master your life purpose, your joy, your peace, your contentment, your future is connected to your life purpose. Not one person watching us right now that you don't have a major life purpose. And I want us to draw into that and allow that to minister. Did you find it for me? I did. Romans 8, 28. Um, in, again, in the Passion Translation, it said, So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together mm. to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives, for we are His lovers who have been called to fulfill His designed purpose. Designed by God. Yes. You were created for good things. Yes. Dee and I are going to pray with you, then we're going to go to a beautiful worship song talking about the peace of God, and God just going to flood your house. Thank you, Lord. But God has a plan for you. Don't you let a mistake or a failure or anything yes. stop you. Let's pray for them. Father, Thank you, Father, we just come in agreement. You said if two of us agree together, it's done. Thank you for our precious friends and partners. Bless every pastor, every bishop, every leader, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists. Bless everything they touch. In Jesus' name. Let's go right now where Dee is singing one of my favorite songs, talking about the peace of God. the power. 
So that's why 